right, the, the couple tutorials here, 3.6 and 3.7, are related to the tangent function. Now, the advantage at this point is we've gone through and done some of the analysis and looking at sine and cosine functions. Right, we've, we talked about standard position and what that means. We talked about definition of sine and cosine and extending the kind of the Greek definitions of trigono uh, trigonometric functions. Okay, we, we started remembering or tried to remember our basic right angle trigonometry and looked at if you want to work with angles more than 90, you need to extend the definition and stop talking about opposite and adjacent and that sort of thing in a triangle and start talking instead about coordinates of a point as you rotate around. Okay, because you can't make an angle bigger than 90 in a right triangle. Um, if you change the definition to, to dealing with the coordinates of that point, if this is the radius, if you, if you make your definition that sine is the y coordinate divided by the radius and uh, cosine of that angle is the x coordinate divided by the radius, then the tangent just goes right along with that, right? And we probably wrote the tangent before too, but the tangent of this, if this is theta, the tangent of that is just the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. I realize that this angle is not in the triangle, and that's troubling if you're thinking of it in terms of the grade 9 type of trig. But that's, that's the way we're defining trig functions for angles bigger than 90. You can think of it from the point of view of this little angle. It's the reference angle. And all you're doing there is, is knowing that that little angle and this angle, the trig ratios are related to each other. The number part is the same. The absolute value is the same. It just might be that it's positive and negative. And that's just because of the symmetry of it. Right? The symmetry as in, if you have 30 degrees there, if I have an angle of 150 degrees, well, that's 30 degrees. And if the coordinates of a point on there are, I don't know what a coordinates uh, of a point on there might be, but I guess something like root 3 and 1 or something like that. The coordinates of a point over here are going to be the same numbers. It's just this is going to be negative root 3 and 1. The number part's going to be the same. Now, for this tangent part then, the reason that this is separated in here, because it, it might seem like, well, why didn't we just do that at the same time as the other ones? Um, and, you know, because we were looking at the definition of sine and cosine. I mean, while we're at it saying y over r is the sine and, oops, and x over r is the cosine, why didn't we just say, well, y over x is the tangent? The tangent looks a little different when you look at the graph. Think about how the values change. We looked at this already in looking at the sine and the cosine. Um, sine and cosine, so this is just the length of, this is just the, sine and cosine are related to the lengths of those sides, right? Sine increases as you go from 90, cosine decreases, but they just follow that same pattern of fluctuating between 0 or negative 1 and 1, right? Sine and cosine don't ever go outside of those values. And the reason is because you can't have the adjacent, adjacent or opposite sides here being longer than that. They're always, you know, these two lengths are always shorter no matter where you are here. They're always shorter than the radius. Even if you change that, I mean, this is a unit circle. This is a radius of one. But even if you change the, the lengths of the sides, these are now bigger than one. But if you look at dividing it by the radius, it's still those values fluctuate between one and negative one. Okay? If you want to look at the graphs of that, I'm sure you're sick of seeing this, but the graphs, okay, um, they fluctuate between as you change the angle. And they don't have, they don't go outside of those values. The range is negative one to one for sine and cosine. They actually have the same shape. It's just that one is sort of shifted. They start at different points in the phase, you know, in the cycle. Cosine starts at the top at one of the peaks. Sine starts in the middle on the way up. But the shape's exactly the same. They just fluctuate between zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, and so on. If you get rid of that now and you look instead at tangent, tangent works differently. If we, if we start at zero here, remember tangent is the, these two things divided by each other. 0.5, you know, this vertical y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. 
tangent starts at zero just like sine does because that y coordinate is zero. Zero divided by one is zero. But then as you increase it here, it gets bigger and bigger and it actually reaches one a lot quicker than than sine does. Okay, if we do it next to if you do it as alongside of the sine model here. Tangent reaches one more quickly than sine does because tangent reaches one about there somewhere when those are equal. Sine is this divided by the radius, and the radius here is one, but tangent is these two divided. Tangent can go way above one. It can keep going up as high as you want. Sine, sine stops at one, cosine stops at one. If you have these values here, this is almost one divided by 0.25. The, the tangent's almost four there. If we went even further here, uh, it's going to round it off to one. It's not really one, but somewhere in there, the tangent is 10. The tangent can get as big as you want. If you change the scale in the graph, you can see that. Okay, if you go down here like this, it flattens a circle out. You can't tell it's a circle anymore, but it is. Um, it's it's going to go as high as you want it to there, except at some point when it flips over to the other side, what happens to the values of tangents? We'll go back to where you can see the circle. As I'm increasing this here, it's getting higher and higher and higher and higher until it goes to right there somewhere, except this won't let me stop right at the value I want, which is 90 degrees or pi over 2. What should the tangent of pi over 2 be? As soon as this value becomes 0, what's happening when I divide? Yeah, it's going to be undefined. Like, let's just push it really close to it here. Let's pretend this is almost getting zero. If I do this value divided by zero, it's undefined. The tangent of 90 is undefined because you're dividing by zero. And maybe in the past when somebody told you, well, you can't divide by zero, it's undefined. The reason that this is undefined is this gives you some insight. If I was approaching from this side, what does it look like the tangent of 90 should be? If I follow the pattern, like the... The tangents are getting larger and larger and larger. So when you, if they get larger infinitely, what should the tangent of 90 be if you come from this side? Yeah, like infinity, positive infinity, right? Whereas if you're on the other side, now this doesn't show this being a negative because it's actually measuring a length, but the coordinate is negative there. If I come from this side, I'm dividing a positive number by a negative number. What does that look like? the tangent should be? Negative infinity. On one side, it looks like the tangent should be negative infinity. On the other side, it looks like the tangent should be positive infinity. That's why it's undefined, because the two sides don't agree. One side thinks it should be positive infinity. One side thinks it should be negative. What that looks like in the graph, if you do this, um, well, first we'll just do the First, we'll just do the tangent graph, and then we'll do it with, along with the sine to see how it compares. It, it starts to go up just like the sine graph, but it doesn't level off at 1. It actually starts to get steeper because as you start to change this and divide bigger and bigger number by a smaller and smaller number, this starts to ramp way up here. Okay, And it's ramping up so much that you can't even make it continuous with the little dots there. But it's, it's going to become asymptotic right here. It's going to follow that line. But then right at pi over 2, it's undefined. And then if you go on the other side, it it comes from there like that. Okay. So as you get close to, you've looked at asymptotes before, there's an asymptote for this graph at pi over 2. Because on one side, it looks like it should be negative infinity. But on the other side, it looks like it should be positive infinity. And that's why it's undefined. Because which is it, right? On your graphing calculator, if you put in y equals tan x, it tries to connect the two because it's not a very sophisticated piece of equipment. 